A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. For the next stage of the project, we're going to set up a class that handles an aspect of our game from the background. Remember that unlike in Decorate, the classes that we define don't have to have a physical presence in the level. The idea will be to reward rapid monster kills by gradually increasing a multiplier that affects how many orbs are dropped. To reward cooperation, but also to simplify things, this multiplier will be global across all players, with each player's kills counting towards the total. Here's how it's going to work. The orb multiplier will start at 1. When a monster is killed, we'll do a couple of new things. Before handing out orbs, we'll multiply the monster's health by our current multiplier. Then we'll raise the multiplier by one tenth and start a countdown from 10 seconds, during which the player has to aim to kill another monster. Every subsequent monster death will raise the multiplier further and restart this countdown. If the countdown hits zero, the multiplier will be reset back to one again, and the player will have to restart building it up. In the ACS and Decorate world, you could sort of implement things like this by using global variables and an infinite loop running in the background. Zscript lets us do this more neatly by creating a thinker that our objects can interact with. This example will follow the convention laid out in the global variables page of the Zdoom wiki. We're going to create a new class that inherits from thinker called the orb multiplier thinker. In here we want to keep track of a decimal value or double called orb multiplier, an int called countdown, and another int that will serve as the maximum value for our countdown. Now we're going to write a function to call when the orb multiplier thinker is first created. We're going to call this function init. Do note that if this means anything to you, this is not technically a constructor. It looks a lot like one, but these don't exist in Zscript, so we have to call it manually instead. In here we'll initialize our variables, setting our orb multiplier to 1, and our maximum countdown value to 350. Our countdown will be measured in ticks, so just like the decay of the orbs, 350 means a value of 10 seconds. We're also going to invoke stat nums like we encountered on the thinker iterator. In this case we're going to change stat num to stat user, just so we know where to search for it when we need it. Finally we're going to make this init function return the orb multiplier thinker object by saying return self. Now unlike our orb objects, we don't want to create a new instance of this class every time we want it. We want exactly one of these to exist in the game at any time. So we'll write a function that we can call from anywhere which will return the orb multiplier thinker if it exists already, or create and return a new orb multiplier thinker if one doesn't already exist. For this we're going to make a static function called getInstance. The static part means it exists unassociated with any specific objects and belongs to the class itself. We've already used a couple of static functions such as actor.spawn and thinkeriterator.create. They're useful in cases like those where we want to create and prepare an actual instance of the class in an organised way. If you want to know more about static functions and variables, they're a concept in object-oriented programming that would be covered in any Java or C-sharp tutorial. As we said, in this function we want to see if any orb multiplier thinker already exists before we create a new one. We'll do this with a thinker iterator in the same way we did before, this time specifying we want to search for an orb multiplier thinker with the stat user stat num. If our next function returns anything, we know we've got one, so we cast the thinker to an orb multiplier thinker and return it. If we didn't find anything, then we can create our new instance. In Zscript, this is done by using the new keyword and specifying the name of the class. We'll also call our init function here so that the object is properly initialized. If you've done object-oriented programming before, you'll have recognised this as a singleton pattern, although it takes a couple of extra steps because Zscript doesn't currently support class or static variables. We get around that by using the thinker iterator to retrieve the singleton instead of storing it ourselves. Now let's do something with this class. We're going to implement a way for another class to increase the multiplier, and a tick function that slowly brings it down again. Our first function will be called raise multiplier. When our multiplier is raised we'll start the countdown from its maximum countdown value, and we'll increment the orb multiplier value by 0.1. Now we're going to implement our overridden version of the tick function. If the countdown hasn't reached 0 yet, then we'll decrement it and then return. If it has reached 0, then we'll set our orb multiplier back to 1 again. As usual it helps to add console.printf lines as well so that we can see what's going on. The placeholder for logging variables that have a decimal fraction is %f. Now let's hook this multiplier thinker into the game by getting our monster death event handler to update it when a monster is killed. In the world thing died function, we'll add a line to get the instance of our orb multiplier thinker. 
This will always give us the same instance of the multiplier thinker, whether it existed already or not. Then, instead of using the monster's maximum health to calculate the number of orbs directly, we'll multiply it by the orb's current multiplier. I'm going to call the health multiplied by the multiplier the monster points. We'll need to set up a double variable to do this, because the int won't be able to hold the decimal fraction. After changing the remaining health variable to this monster points variable throughout the rest of the function, we'll then tell our thinker to raise the multiplier. Again, a printf function will clarify what it's thinking here. So to summarise these edits, we retrieve the orb multiplier thinker at the start of the world thing died function, and to get the number of orbs a monster death is worth, we'll multiply the dying thing's maximum health by the orb multiplier value that's stored on that thinker. We then call raise multiplier and loop on the multiplied value to dispense the orbs instead of using the monster's maximum health directly. Meanwhile, in the background, our orb multiplier thinker is ticking away in its countdown. On every call to raise multiplier, it will bump our multiplier up and will reset that countdown. If it manages to end the countdown before raise multiplier is called again, it will reset the multiplier back to 1. When you start the game up with our new orb multiplier thinker in place, you'll be able to see the console reporting the multiplier slowly increasing as you tear through the monsters, and a gradually increasing value of orbs spilling out of them. Using some IDKFA assistance on levels with a large monster count will allow you to see some very dramatic increases. Next time we'll go back to looking at UI code and how to display the status of this new thinker on the screen.